Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline connects you with experts from all over the world to help you take charge of your career, your business, and your life. Wrap along with us. Visit drjacqueline.com to learn how to become a guest or a sponsor. And now, the doctor is in. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to have you here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You are joining us today on a very special program. You are watching Celebrate Great Britain Royally Rich Show. And I am your host and executive producer, Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. My co-host is with us today, Al Sini, and I'll be bringing him out soon. Our show is starring Ian Pelham Turner and Helena Shard. And this program is all about promoting business, tourism, and communities between our two great countries, the United States of America and Great Britain. We are so thrilled to have Ian and Helena and their guests with us today. Let me bring out my co-host, Mr. Al Sini. Hello, Al. Dr. Jacqueline, what a pleasure. This is going to be such a great program. I know, I know. I'm so excited. We get to meet the most interesting people who are accomplishing all kinds of wonderful things and bringing them visibility in our country and around the world. They, they, they've, uh, Ian, Ian and Helena have really outdone themselves this week. They've brought us three great guests. We're going to talk about the UK. Uh, we're going to talk about entertainment. We're going to talk about politics. And I can't wait to get started. Let's bring them out. All right, without further ado, here they are. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. Good to see you. Dr. Jacqueline and I'm very pleased to see your Alfred this week. <laughs> where's, where's the knighthood, Sir Alfred? We, there still needs a Sir in the front of it as well. But um, I, I, might, I might add that in a little later. Let's see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, you you two have been quite busy, and I know there's a lot of news going on over there. We can't wait to hear it, but you've also brought some amazing guests, and I'd love to just uh, have you tee them up, if you would. Okay, well, first of all, we're going to start off with uh, Stephen Gillen and Daphne Deleuze. Now, Stephen uh, doesn't mind being said that at one stage, he was a Category A prisoner. He's one of the highest uh, forms of of uh, criminal uh, prisoners that we have in Britain. And then he had a complete change of life. Uh, and with that change of life, um, he wrote his life story and it is fascinating. Not only is it fascinating, it's being turned as we speak into a Hollywood movie as well. Great. I actually ordered his book and it should be arriving today. Yay, so I'm looking forward to reading it. And then we have uh, Simon. Simon McDonald. Okay. And Simon, uh, you know, I think Simon is going to become a regular on our shows because um, he epitomizes Scotland uh, mm. and all the values of Scotland as well. And you can almost, you know, feel the heather, you know, the warmth of Scotland uh, as he speaks at the same time. And then finally, we have Sam. Now, Sam is an incredible artist, but he owns a, a restaurant in London called Jazz After Dark. And Jazz After Dark once had a very famous waitress, but she was only 14 or 15 at the time. And one night, Sam had a jazz band in his restaurant, and the young girl said, could I sing with the jazz band? Yes, okay. And do you know who that person was? You're not supposed to give it away. Well, yes, I know who it is. It's a okay. secret. <laughs> well, this is, this is teasing it out. So we, well, shortly you will find out who was the very, very, very famous person who was a waitress to start off with and became a superstar. Wow. Excellent, excellent. So that's exciting. So we're going to start with some news. So at the, this week is Mental Health Awareness Week, um, and it's so, so, so important. Everyone is connecting with nature. That's the theme of this year. So resetting, reconnecting, committing to our own mental wellness. And what better way, to just a very simple way to get out and go to the park. And we have some fabulous royal parks here in, in the UK. I think there's about eight, but in fact, 
Uh, I would say one of the best, I think Ian as well, you like it as well, is St. James's Park, and that's the oldest royal park. Um, it's surrounded by three palaces, St. James's, Buck Powell, and the Houses of Parliament. And the three stars of the show, um, well, stars of the park, are Gargi, Tiffany, and Isla, and they are the most amazing pelicans. Um, they were introduced by a Russian ambassador, uh, who presented them to Charles II in 1664 for anyone who likes a little bit of history. Right. Um, and actually, James I uh, introduced crocodiles, cam camels and elephants. So it's amazing to think that that was all that time ago that they were wandering around the park. Um, but I think we had a little clip as well. of, of the We sure do. I think. It's a lovely feeling. So we all need to immerse ourselves in nature. Absolutely. You. <laughs> and I, and I, think, you. I think with the park as well, I mean, a, a lot of Americans come to the park. Uh, you can actually eat in the park as well yeah. uh, at the same time. And um, a lot of uh, the area around Buckingham Palace was former swampland at one time, and it was Henry VIII that actually sort of first of all changed swampland into the parks that we are, we know today. Mm. So it has a lot of royal history to it at the same time. Everyone should come along and see it, Absolutely. definitely. Um, I think you wanted to talk about Her Majesty the Queen, didn't you? Well, Her Majesty the Queen at the moment, I, I mean, uh, I, what can I say about Her Majesty the Queen? I mean, talk about being a stoic. A few weeks after the death of her husband, Prince Philip, all of a sudden, there she is again. Uh, she's coming up on Zoom everywhere. Again, I, I can't believe her at the moment. She was on a Zoom call the other day, uh, first of all. And, you know, the, the thing that I really liked about the Queen this week was the state opening of Parliament. And what a beautiful outfit she was wearing. She's wearing a stunning outfit. And lovely she that was she stunning. has her son with her escorting her absolutely um, which is great and obviously the queen's speech which is very special on those days and it sets out the government's legislation for the year so it's one day of the year that's really quite important but also the duke and duchess of cambridge we have to to talk about duke and duchess they have really modernized themselves um i know it's it's quite a simple thing really but they've now opened their own youtube channel um, and they have changed their handle as well to the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, whereas I think before it was Kensington Royal. Um, it sounds very simple, but it's it's a, it's a wonderful thing because obviously they can connect more. It's nice, it's lovely for us to be able to see them. Um, it's not going to be like the day in the life of, but they'll be show, you know, showcasing their work and get to know them a little bit more and their characters. Um, and I think the youngsters, the younger generation, all key into social media, so they're now all on those platforms because. Um, Obviously, they promote uh, positive mental health and younger years. I mean, there's so many things that they do with the Royal Foundations and that. Um, so it's great to see that. And the new book. Absolutely. But I, I think as well, we were just before we came on, we were talking backstage about bloopers. <laughs> yeah. uh, and um, <laughs> we've just seen the first royal bloopers because with uh, William and Kate, uh, there's a 15 second blooper where they didn't realize they were re being recorded and going out, going out <laughs> live, because William is saying to Kate, for goodness sake, don't say anything. And then he suddenly realizes that the message that he's trying to tell Kate, in other words, don't say anything too contentious, <laughs> is going out live right across the world. So, so, <laughs> so the first royal blooper <laughs> so far, that, that was shown on YouTube the other day as well. That's great. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> I can't wait to see all, all the bleepers. <laughs> oh, really Are we, you storing them? We've all done some in our time, trust me. We've all done some in our time. <laughs> just have to laugh. Let it go. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, so um, I hope we've got a little bit more time. Um, so 
So Megan uh, Duke of Dutch's new book, which is a fantastic new book that's out, 100 Photographs Chosen. It's called Hold Still um, in association with the National Portrait Gallery. And it's a, a book that reflects the life during COVID, but it's so special um, in that it shows, it highlights the challenges, but also the positives, the incredible acts of kindness that I love, helpers, heroes, and, and really it highlights hope. Um, it's a fabulous book and each picture, which is very powerful, tells a story and they highlight that on their YouTube channel. And we can talk about one of the royal secrets because one Just of the one. royal secrets was, was that when Kate left Edinburgh University, she came to London and in reality, she wanted to become a photographer. She certainly wasn't looking at becoming uh, the wife of Prince William at all. She wanted to become a photographer. And so she went to train for a year at Kensington and Chelsea College. So hmm. nowadays, when you see so many photographs um, that are showing the, the royal children, especially right now, that's why she is taking them, because she has a passion for photography as well. And Kensington and Chelsea College is a college in London where many, many people from around the world, if they're quite famous, and they have children who want to become photographers, they all go to Kensington Chelsea College because it's kept quiet. You yeah. know, no, nobody knows who they are and they just become normal students yeah. at the same time. A friend of mine was there at the same time. Um, she's a very good photographer, I have to say. And of course it works, isn't it? Because it's ring fence, doesn't it? So it she is. can keep it and uh, the children love it. But of course, um, I think probably Dr. Jacqueline and Al, you, you've heard about uh, Megan's, Megan Markle's new book as well, called The Bench. Um, it, I don't think it's quite been released yet, although it could be released online. So it centres on a very special relationship. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, I mean, th there's obviously interest in this side of the water as well, um, you know, with what's going on right now. And hopefully, 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 uh, we did our fingers crossed just beforehand. Uh, hopefully things will resolve themselves uh, yeah. between all the members of the royal family. Um, and uh, we will have a, you know, a powerful connection with America uh, mm. still, uh, and so will they at the same time. Yeah. It's a shame well, we keep on talking about, you know, that the, there's like rivalry between. Yeah, um, but it is what it is. It is, is what it is. So, well, we hope for that. So Absolutely. Right. We would love that. Definitely. Should we should we introduce our first guests? Wonderful. I think we should. Let's take a quick commercial break, if that's okay. Uh, we have sponsors, and yes, and then we'll be right back on Celebrate Great Britain Royally Rich Show. Excellent. It's what we do together that counts. The Big Alliance story, a true story about faith over adversity, perseverance, and entrepreneurship. Read Earl's story and how he became an entrepreneur. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible.com. For more information, contact Earl Hurd at earlhurd at BicAlliance.com or call 1-800-460-4242. Hi, my name is Zane Carson Carew, and I'm the author of this book, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Reading is magic. Studies have shown that reading to your children lays the foundation for greater success in life. Reading helps develop language and vocabulary skills. It helps improve memory, and it encourages curiosity and inspires creativity. The benefits are immeasurable, and as a parent, you'll benefit too. In only 10 or 15 minutes a day, you'll be creating more memories and a bonding experience that will last for years to come. So take time to read to your children. Read them books about things that engage and interest them. Tales of fairies and magic fascinate children, and as everyone knows, the Tooth Fairy is at the top of the list. If your child loves magic, wands, adventure, and what child doesn't, you'll love reading them books from the trademark series The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Follow along as Abella, the world's first tooth fairy, accidentally starts the tooth fairy tradition. Learn the tricks of being a professional tooth fairy in the book Abella Starts a Tooth Fairy School. Your child's imagination will soar as you read the adventures of Abella and her magic wand.
These wonderful books are available at worldsfirsttoothfairy.com and at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. Located at 121 Haddon Avenue in Westmont, New Jersey, is Margie Cedrone, artisan jeweler. Margie's been in business for more than 30 years. She works with her clients to create custom pieces of jewelry to reflect their personality and help them make their own bold statement. Starting in the renowned Jewelers Row in Center City, Philadelphia in 1988, Margie works directly with her clients to develop one-of-a-kind pieces such as necklaces, engagement rings, wedding bands, unique watches and tennis bracelets, as well as a myriad of rings and earrings for everyone in your family. She also has worked directly with Dr. Jacqueline over the years, creating unique pieces of jewelry to reflect her personality. She does pearl stringing and repairs on site at 121 Haddon Avenue. Call or text Margie at 215 215- 384-7155. Margie Sajone Jewelry is open by appointment only. Make your own bold statement. Welcome back. Here we are. We've got a full house. This is Celebrate Great Britain Royally Rich Show. And hello to our guests, Stephen and Daphne. Hello. Hi. Hi, Dr. Jacqueline. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you both. Pleasure. So, Stephen, uh, Gillan, and Daphne Zulis are two great friends of mine, first of all, I should say, uh, and with Helena as well. Um, and Stephen, you've had the most amazing journey in your life. It's true to say at one stage, you were a bit of a rascal, let's be honest, you know, <laughs> at one time in your life uh, and uh, had uh, obviously issues that you had to sort of deal with. But then you made this incredible transition uh, and you've written this wonderful book, The Monkey Puzzle Tree. So Stephen, tell me exactly, just give us an overview of what happened during the monkey puzzle tree years and then where you are right now well i think it's it's fair to say all of us would uh, uh, understand we all get lost sometimes it doesn't really matter of how we start or you know the influences that come in i mean i always say it is about that ex, uh, uh, expert uh, expeditious learning by our mistakes certainly going forward you know it stepping into the person we have to be. So, you know, just to say I I had to navigate a lot of trauma in the early years. You know, I was given a great instruction in the formative years, but then I went on to have a lot of trauma in and out of prison, um, approved schools, homes, you know, I went on to uh, petty crime, or to serious organized crime. You know, I ended up one of the uh, most dangerous prisoners, uh, certainly at that time in the, in the UK. But I, uh, thankfully, you know, and very purposely, so I, you know, I changed my life. I went on to, you know, to do wonderful stuff in business, to uh, um, to become a peace ambassador, to be nominated for an international peace prize, and of course to write the monkey puzzle tree, which is a very human story. I'm, I'm with the monkey puzzle tree because it's got uh, Irish connections as well. So just give us a little bit of your history because uh, you, you went to Ireland for a while. Uh, you saw some pretty tragic things at, at some stage. Um, and you, you always set the shivers down my spine. Dr. Jacqueline, when you read this book, there, there's part of this book which I won't spoil for you. But my yeah. God, every time I used to read this book, I never used to read it late at night. You know, because he used to send the fear of God at me. <laughs> this, this particular bit of the book, and it carries on through the book. But 
just give us a quick overview on, on uh, the, the Irish part as well. Yeah. I'm very sorry, firstly, and you had to hide under the covers. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was all about the authenticity of the story because, you know, I certainly know unless we really face the brutal truth, we're not going to um, exponentially find find the right solutions. And I, you know, I wanted to translate that journey, especially the solutions to many people I know out there who may be struggling with similar 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 problems i was actually born here uh, at around six months old i was taken over to belfast where my uh, maternal family come from of course that was in 1971 you know in the midst of the war there uh, i see someone uh killed in front of me age seven i had to stay there because of the the you know the shooting and the bombing there this was in the middle of a riot i had to stay there for 20 minutes while he while he died and called for his mother. This was this was traumatic. And um this was the start of you know a lot of dark dark events uh throughout my life until until I had the opportunity, certainly the circumstance uh and the strength, you know, to come out of that. Mm. Daphne <laughs> Daphne you both have such a great bond. Um and I know that you work together uh, all the time. What's, what was your input with the book and the support network? Oh, that's a great question. Stephen is totally unique, um, and I, I actually get him totally. So when um, it was time to write the book, because this book definitely had a timing, um, too early, too late, it was the right time to do it. So, yeah, I was a support system. So... Yeah, he went into the office for hours and days and wrote, and I kept everything going and just did my best to support him. But Stephen is an incredibly talented writer and um, and very disciplined. So, you know, it's easy to support good stuff. Good. Oh, that's fabulous. Stephen, I, 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 you've got such a great story to tell, and it's your story. What's it like turning that into a movie? It's, it's not what people would think, you know, sometimes uh, people would talk about it and say, hi, you know, I am a person, I am in the room. It's not that bad, but it is kind of, you know, in the third person. But, you know, we have had to, you know, you have to work immensely. Uh, you know, you would appreciate this in the media, you know, over a lot of months, even years, to position something, something like this. It takes a lot of discipline and a lot of, um, you know, a lot of skill, you know, and even investment along the way. And Stephen, we hear that you're writing a second book, which is very exciting. Can you share a little bit about what your story is going to be? And also, how can people get in touch with you and, and find your books? Well, I'm all over so social media. I do a lot of work with, with you guys in the US. Um, you know, a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of big names over there. It's, it's a wonderful audience. You guys are very, very vibrant, you know, and I, re I really love the work that I do with you guys. So, you know, I'm I, I'm kind of out there. It's, it's quite easy to find me. But the easiest way, you know, to get more content as well is to go into my personal personal, personal site, www.stephengillen.com. That's really easy. Or social media, Google me. It's very easy to get me. But the second book, I must say, is absolutely wonderful. My literary agent, you know, um, we are in a deal at the moment where it, it will be specifically targeted to the US market, this book, you know, and, you know, and there are film TV rights attached to the second book. So it's, it's a wonderful story. It's based on a true story of um, an incident 50 years ago where the anniversary will be in August when the book will be published of um, where the most George Crosses were uh, given out by the Queen uh, for one incident. You know, and unfortunately, the, the most senior police officer, certainly in UK history, unfortunately lost his life and was murdered. It's a, it's a very human story. It's a story of treachery, intrigue. Um, it's a drama. It's, it's uh, intensely emotional, but it takes the reader all the way through the characters of what happened with the story and what happened to them as they as they come through these historic events? Wow. And Stephen, could I just ask another question? 
I know these days that you, know, you work a lot with young people and um, you give advice to perhaps people who, who are slightly going down the wrong path. What's the type of advice that you would give to young people at the moment, especially in Britain and in America as well, you know, that uh, you feel maybe going down the wrong path? What type of advice do you give them? That's easy, Ian. You know, and there are certainly a lot of variables uh, influences in a person's life or journey but to narrow it really really simply um, I've learned through all of it that we need you know we need uh, strength we need uh, circumstance we need opportunity strength sometimes intervention to come together at the same time for meaningful change to really really work but I would say really really simply keep always doing the next right thing no matter how hard that may be. And sometimes, let's face it, it is. But when you're focused on doing the right thing, you will always end up somewhere good. It's really as easy as that. I would advise that. And do you think that prison changed you? Um, you know, because uh, at one stage, as you so rightly describe yourself, uh, you were quite a violent person at one time, I think you would agree, uh, and a lot of violence around you as well. What, what was the single thing that you that really clicked that changed your life for the better? That's an interesting question, Ian. I can only I can only go with my truth. And again, there are different influences and variables here, especially to people's response and their individuality to adversity such as that. The truth is, I handle prison very badly. This is how my defense against that was kind of a form of attack. It's not to be advised, certainly. It was my path. I wouldn't advise it to anyone else. But prison is a funny place. Um, it's very hard to manage so many people and get the best out of them. I It had an adverse effect on me, I suppose, up to a, up to a pivotal time, which was internalized in my journey. And I chose necessarily to change after so long so that, that that that's my truth you know i hope that helps and, I, and just so finally because i know we're, we're short on time uh, and another guests are coming on again as well what do you think you would like to see in the future now uh, at the moment um there's all sorts of the new criminal bills coming in as well does this really help uh because in britain at the moment now we're starting to see more draconian laws potentially coming in. Does that help or do young people especially need to have a lot more understanding? I think I think we can get lost in the use of the stick, you know, and uh, this can be spun as something else as a strategy to really as what the intention is behind that. Certainly people need to be protected and they need to feel safe. You know, as they navigate their lives, certainly um, people need to be accountable for their actions. But certainly, what we look at and what we're doing, um, you know, we're starting to build the Stephen Gillen Foundation. You're aware of that, Ian, which will address a lot of these underlying issues. Is is the underlying stuff? You know, the one parent families, the you know, the no opportunity, the no education, the you know, the the um, uh, no, no future, no understanding of a future, no support or the right intervention or instruction towards that future. These things are absolutely pivotal. Stephen and Daphne, it's been great talking to you. I know, I mean, uh, it's just, I'm sure, hopefully, just as fascinating for people in America uh, to, hear, to hear really what's going on because uh, you have similar problems. Do you not think, Alan, uh, Dr. Jacqueline, that um, this type of thing, it can transfer right across the world, this type of support, this type of advice. It, it, it is a, a very inspiring story of redemption. It's a turnaround. And it definitely applies uh, equally here as it does there. It's just a great story, Stephen. Wow, Absolutely. We love to hear stories of how people have uh, overcome adversity and how they're giving back and then being a beacon of light for everyone. So thank you for that. We do have two comments. Uh, I'm sure there's another book in the wing, The Romance Story of Stephen and Daphne, like Romeo and Juliet. It could be a classic like his book, The Monkey Puzzle Tree. Great inspirations to the young people of today. Thank you, Philip Chan. And we have another comment 
from Nicola. How did Stephen and Daphne meet? <laughs> Daphne? <laughs> well, this is really, really sweet and bizarre. Um, people were saying, you have to meet Stephen. And I went, well, why? And then they were saying the same to him. You have to meet Daphne. Well, he was looking to do a project and he needed some special like branding, project management and global, global business. Yeah. Um, anyway, Stephen and I didn't know each other um, and we started to text and talk on the phone. Um, then I said, look, I'm a really busy woman. I can only help you on Saturdays because he's so persistent, doesn't give up. <laughs> anyway, um, then we met on a Saturday, we did some work. And then the second Saturday we did some work and then we've been together ever since. <laughs> <laughs> what a great story i love that i love that you said only on saturday and so finally and, yeah. and now when when it gets very stressing because we do global work uh kind of brand media pr and we help a lot of people we, we're real big helpers um and when we're both very tired he looks over and he goes with a cheeky grin and his cockney accent so how's the saturday job doing love yeah and how's I that go, saturday job going for your love <laughs> That's the running joke. You know, the rest is history, Dr. Jacqueline. But Daphne is a, you know, she's a real seer and she really is what, 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 it, what it says in the tin. She's such a wonderful human being. You know, that is very beguiling for me. You know, certainly for anyone that she meets, you know, it's a, it's a. That's nice. I don't give these, I don't give these comments easily, but it is the truth. Right. Lovely well, you're, you're a lovely couple, and we congratulate you on your success and look forward to that second book. And I can't wait for the first book that's coming today and uh, for your film. That sounds very exciting. Definitely. Thank you for buying it, Dr. Jacqueline. Hi to everyone out there. I'm, you know, all the wonderful audience. Thank, thank you for the opportunity to yeah, come thank on you for having and us. speak with everyone. Yeah. Yes, we'll look forward to having you back on another show. If you're, if you're open to it, that'd be terrific. Absolutely. We've got so many stories to tell. <laughs> I know, I can tell we're just at the surface. So we'll be in touch to have you back on. Thank you again. It's great seeing you. Bye. Bye, bye. bye guys. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Oh, they were delightful. So we've got Simon backstage. And we're going to take a, a quick break and hear from one of our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. So anybody who's out there looking for work or needs help with a career change or resume writing, Mindy Thomas is your person. We'll hear from her, and then we'll be right back. Great. Hi, everyone. I'm Mindy Thomas, founder of Thomas Career Consulting. If you are dealing with the stress of having been terminated or being laid off, Considering a career change or you simply cannot land a job with your current resume, you came to the right place. My professional expertise centers on being trained in two distinct areas, career counseling and career marketing. I am also the host of Career Chat, a weekly talk show which appears on RVN TV. My end game is helping you to overcome the self-doubt, the fear and the other barriers you are facing right now in a very tricky, perplexing and complicated job market. Six point five seconds. That's how much time it takes a recruiter to scan your resume. On top of that, electronic applicant tracking systems may reject you even if you have the skills, education and experience. I teach you how to win when you absolutely have to. My resume writing practice is built on a personalized, collaborative, and strategic approach that showcases your accomplishments in a way to get you noticed. At the center of my strategy is identifying your strengths and targeted keywords to make you stand out from the competition. As a professional resume writer, I know what it takes to impress even the most discriminating hiring manager. Changing careers, launching a new one, overwhelmed or stuck in a dead end job. I have more than two decades of experience as a Georgetown trained leadership coach, resume writer, career counselor, and recruiter. So whether you're a student, a top executive, or simply struggling to find your own career identity and you're feeling lost, you can count on me to lead you through the journey of self-discovery. I will formulate a step-by-step -step plan that begins with the assessment of your skills, 
your interests, your values, and your personality, and then explore the opportunities that are best suited to align with you. In essence, what makes sense for you? With 25 years of business experience, I have been privileged to work with a diverse group of adults, from young high school students to the millennials, the generation X, Y, and Z, and boomers. Let me put that to work for you. Welcome back to Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline. I am, uh, my name is Alfred, Sir Alfred, sort of. <laughs> and, uh, and, it is, and, and this is the celebrating the royally rich relationship between the United States and the UK with uh, two wonderful people, Ian Pelham Turner and Helena Chard. And uh, Ian and Helena, maybe you can tell us about our next guest. Well, so Simon, hi Simon. So this is Simon McDonald. He's a fabulous man. Um, he knows all about the Scottish fishing industry, and I won't say too much about it, but um, I think we'll dive straight in and, and start asking some questions. So really, Simon, can you tell us about your life and background in Scotland? Right. Hi, Helena. And, uh, and, and firstly, uh, Ian, with the intro which you gave me at the beginning of the show there, had I known it was going to be so uh, patriotically Scottish, I would have worn full regalia and kilt and had a piper standing by. <laughs> 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 well, we've, we've both had and a Scottish bottle of bonk blood. whiskey. <laughs> we've both, we've both had Scottish blood, that's why. <laughs> oh, well, next time, Ian, you wear a kilt, I'll wear a kilt. <laughs> <It's not laughs> a deal. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I was born at an early age, as most people are, and I had great passions uh, through my life, and notably the sea and the West Highlands of Scotland. I mean, it is a magnificent place. It is uh, spectacular, it is majestic, uh, it is awe-inspiring, and anybody here lives the history. You are part of it. And Scotland, is, it, it's not just a place, it's a feeling. Uh, it, a wonderful, wonderful uh, place to be. I started sailing uh, on yachts and family yacht when I was about four years of age. I've probably gone sideways ever since. But I, I, I've had such a, a, an experience with the west coast of Scotland waters in particular that I, I really wanted to make it into a career somehow. At four years of age, well, you know, you don't have many firemen on the water. Everybody wants to be a fireman when they're four years of age. So anyway, as life went on and I stayed with the sea, enjoyed the sea, and then my work started with the sea. And I've been in fisheries now for just over 40 years without giving my age away. And I started off uh, creel fishing. Now that's uh, working with, with pots for catching lobsters and langoustine and, uh, and crab. So I had a small boat doing that, and then I progressed on and bought a, bought a small trawler. So it gave me experience on both sides of the world. As that was going on, I got involved in setting up one of the fishermen's associations to cover the, uh, the, the creel industry on the west of Scotland. And uh, then that progressed on to me getting involved in the processing side. So then I really had experience in all, all, all aspects of the fisheries. And uh, it, it's been a phenomenal ride right through. I've enjoyed every second of it and still do. Great believer that uh, if you don't look forward to a Monday morning, well, it's time to change your career. And that's how I've, uh, how I've always been. And I still look forward to a Monday morning intensely. Maybe not at six o'clock in the morning, but 
later on in the morning. It's wonderful. wonderful. So uh, my processing uh, side, I built a smokehouse in a very remote little village in the West Highlands. Uh, and when I say remote, to give you an idea of the perspective, it would cost you 10 litres of petrol just to go and buy five litres of petrol. So we were out in the sticks. But I built the, build, the business up on the quality, based on the quality of my surroundings, on the quality of the fish and everything that was being landed to me. And I then started diversifying, actually smoked more than just fish. In fact, I think it's fair to say I probably smoked anything other than cigarette. And uh, we were doing everything, even alligator. I was bringing alligator in from Louisiana and smoking it and shipping most of it back out there again. So they like the Scottishness about it. Uh, it caused no end of trouble with the uh, American FDA, I can hasten to add. So my client base finished up really from uh, Beverly Hills in the west to Tokyo in the east. I got involved in consultancy work and then eventually sold my processing business, moved out to South Africa doing consultancy for five years, then the south of France for another five years, then back to Scotland. I missed the rain. So here we are back in Scotland <laughs> where I got uh, the role as chair of the West Coast Regional Inshore Fisheries Group, which is just a fantastic job. It's challenging. At the interview, I said, I like a challenge in life. And uh, little did I realize they were going to take me totally at face value because they threw in COVID, three market collapses and Brexit as well, just to add the cherry on top of the cake. Hmm. So ev every day is an adventure. And my area covers me from Cape Roth in the very north, right the way down to the English border and the Solway Firth and the Inner Hebrides as well. So it, it's a wonderful part of the world. I know the waters well. I know so many of the fishermen and so many of the characters. Wonderful, wonderful people. I love your passion, Simon. Uh, I love your background, too. I love it. You're all... Oh, sorry. I was just the room. <laughs> We've got ours. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the pictures on the back there, I, I'm, you know, been brought, brought up in very much of a country lifestyle as well. And uh, they're from a, an artist uh, who was born in Britain but lived in America, uh, Maud Earl. She was born uh, about 1864 and died in 1943. Uh, these are signed, uh, signed, signed paintings that she did. Uh, of the 12 months of the year and the different uh, gun dogs and working dogs aspect right through. Love them, absolutely love them. Remember, my grandfather had them. But yes, Scotland is a passion. Fishing or the fisheries is a passion. And I'm passionate about what I do. You know, I, 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 wanted, to, I, I wanted to follow up on, on a point you made, uh, Simon. First of all, I am wearing a kilt, but you'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> second of all, <laughs> uh, I, I don't yeah, think I, I, I used to wear a kilt quite a bit, but the last time you saw a pair of legs like this, they were in a zoo. But 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 we you mentioned you touched on the politics of fishing, and I don't think we get to talk about that very much with everything that's happened, especially post Brexit. How has that affected the fishing industry in Scotland? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's affected it. <laughs> it's not 30 seconds. Uh, You're kidding. Yeah. <laughs> We've had, uh, you know, the markets have collapsed into Europe, and this is a combination of COVID and Brexit as well. Uh, we've had all sorts of problems with the paperwork. Before, it used to be so simple. Uh, I mean, take Langostine, for example, which is probably one of the major catches on the west, uh, west of Scotland. And you know, the the truckloads and truckloads and truckloads would go into into Europe, uh, amounting to nearly ninety five percent of the catch in Scotland. Well, all of a sudden, they introduced huge amounts of paperwork, huge amount of bureaucracy, which all takes so much time. And when you're trying to trying to transport live shellfish uh, over a distance. Uh, any delay can, can wipe out that entire cons consignment. And a lot of the boats were struggling because the exporters were very hesitant about taking taking catches in. And it, it, it really created quite a disaster. Uh, I mean, my role now as a as chair, uh, I, I work very closely and as part of the Scottish government. 
and uh, we had to try and resolve some of these issues straight away. So we had meetings with our other chairs and with the, the cabinet secretary, uh, Fergus Ewing, and we came up with a, with, with a plan to develop funding to keep the fishermen in business, basically. So uh, we, we did this very, very rapidly. In fact, uh, within four days of our discussions, the first boats were actually getting paid out, uh, you know, to keep them, keep them afloat. I mean, my campaign was keep our fleet afloat. And uh, you try saying that with a drink in you after a while, it's very difficult. But they, uh, anyway, th this worked. It, uh, it, it kept our fleet going. It kept the fishermen on the go. We had some crisis on the way. I mean, I've had grown men on the phone to me in tears, and these are hardened fishermen that you know are struggling to put food on the table. However, we managed to resolve it as best we could, and uh, you know, so they were still they were still able to uh, put food on the table, and we started developing more onto the the domestic market, which has actually been neglected a bit for quite a while, and. When I was doing my processing work back in the day there as well, because I was working with unusual fish and unusual products, uh, I found myself being sort of hurtled into uh, the media world because, you know, it's not many people that smoke alligators for a living and ostriches and kangaroos and all sorts of different things and cheeses as well. So, uh, you know, they wanted to know about this. And I finished up doing a lot of uh, morning television and uh, another great passion of mine is food. It shows on my waistline, hence the reason I've got the screen at this level. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, they, they uh, you know, don't even imagine. <laughs> but they, uh, you know, the, 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 the industry uh, was really in, in quite a desperate situation when I, and then I, I would say, I started cooking with these unusual foods and appearing in different shows. And we were talking about bloopers earlier on try doing a show when you're cooking and you have an incontinent alpaca at your side <laughs> <laughs> away. it's not easy believe me <laughs> this, this show's a breeze <laughs> so Brexit has caused its problems definitely um, but the paperwork starting to smooth its way out now and uh, we've been become masters of excuses on how to get this stuff through. But the, the, the flow of traffic is working now, and uh, all we need now is to try and get the prices back up again, because the poor fishermen, uh, you know, they're working hard, and they're working for less money than they did three, four years ago now. So we've got to rectify that. Apart from that, the world's a breeze. <laughs> Sounds like you're quite busy and have your hands full oh, yeah. there. So. Uh, when we have you back again, which I'm just assuming we will because you have so much to share, I want to know about those medals the next time, medals behind you. But uh, 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 <laughs> I want to plan you, on going been, to... Been, been, <laughs> yes, I'm zooming in on the background there. Uh, I definitely want to go to Scotland, and I'm wondering when I'm there, what opportunities should I plan on visiting? Right, you can come and visit me anytime you like. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, I love that. Maybe you can be like tour guide. Well, I mean, when you when you land, we've got two two or three international airports. I've lost count of these things now because nobody's flying anywhere. But uh, Edinburgh is is the capital uh, of, of Scotland. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. I I never regard Edinburgh as being a city. I always regard it as being Scotland's largest village because it's got that kind of atmosphere in it. It's got heritage, it's got history in bucket loads. And it, it, it's an amazing place, but don't spend too long there. Head north, head west, because that's when you really get into a magnificent place. And I think it's true to say that when you get to the West Highlands and you see these mountains and the sea locks and the islands, it's then you realize the hills bow down to the sea here. And the majesty of it all is just, absolutely breathtaking it's inspirational and you hear and you see the gulls flying overhead and the cries almost are echoing battles of an era long long gone so when you're here you are you're living in the history and you can't help but be absorbed by it it is spectacular and in spite of what people say about deep fried Mars bars and so on, Scottish cooking is actually not bad at all. <laughs> My waistline proves it. <laughs> but uh, we do. We have 
fabulous natural quality food here. The uh, our lobsters, our langoustine in particular, uh, and the crabs, the venison from the hills, the salmon in the rivers. I, we want for nothing here. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to be. Yeah. And Simon, we both have Scottish blood in our veins. Why do you Some think... More than others. Not, <laughs> Sorry, Turner, Turner is a recognised Scottish name. <laughs> oh, but, but Patterson is. And my my oh, mother... Yes, yeah. Make an excellent uh, short yeah. Patterson with one T. The, the, what do you think... There is a, there's an extra quality, I think, to a lot of Scottish people who then go out right across the world and create some incredible ventures in their own right. You only have to look at uh, how Americans have actually, uh, and Scottish people have moved into American way of life as well. What do you think uh, are the qualities of Scottish people that really uh, give them uh, that extra uh, values that can really create some world-beating opportunities. Uh, whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, you know we're we're a pretty hospitable lot. Uh, you know we, we we are friendly. We don't all paint our faces blue now and wear a woad and uh, you know and and cry battle obscenities from the tops of hills while raising our kilts to to to. to <laughs> You know, display a bare backside. Uh, you know, we are a pretty civilized lot now, uh, and we're very inventive in Scotland. I mean, the number of things that have been invented here: television, um, the tires on your car, uh, invented by Dunlop. Uh, we've got uh, penicillin. Uh, you know, I mean, this is just a whole whole host of, uh, of of inventiveness in Scotland, and we're we we are an inventive lot. Uh, I lived on the island of Egg for a while, a uh, little island seven miles long, three miles wide, just off the west coast of Scotland. And I had a, a, a couple of years privilege of living there uh, and also running their uh, local shipping company. And this was just immediately before I bought my first fishing boat. And uh, there, there was an expression there if anything went wrong. It would be egg engineering would bring it back together again. And I mean, you, you had to be inventive. Uh, there was no MOT test to get it for your car there. Uh, it was just test enough to get it up the hill. Uh, and the road tax was the sort of thing that gave you punctures. So the car I had there was uh, full of egg engineering because um, the suspension broke. So two fence posts wired together under the back axle held it together for about another thousand miles. Yeah, so you, you've got to be creative. And uh, egg engineering is a very important part of the uh, way of living here. That's the inventiveness and the creativeness you have to carry with you in every aspect. So much to explore. Yes, fascinating. Simon, what is the best way for people to get in touch with you? Uh, smoke signals. Um, <laughs> in, invite me to the pub. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> invite me out sailing i'll be there before you even know it uh they could they could email me i think it's probably the the easiest way and uh if you want my email address it's mcdonald simon at ymail.com and that's uh mcdonald m-a-c-d-o-n-a-l-d s-i-m-o-n and it's the letter y mail not gmail I'm a ymail.com, <laughs> and I will do my best to answer answer as many, if not all, the emails I possibly can. I get barraged with them every day, mostly by fishermen saying, help. <laughs> and I like to help. I'm here for people. I'm here to enjoy. Life should be enjoyed. Thank you, sir. And the sky is not the limit, so long as there are footprints on the moon. Always remember that. <laughs> That's a good quote. You can tell you're very passionate about what you do and passionate about life. So thank you for being here and sharing that with us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Absolute delight to be here. We're going to take a quick break and hear from our sponsors, but bye, Simon. Thank you so much. And we'll be back with our special guests. Right. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Story Garden. Your host, Diane Bame. I'm so happy to have you here today. 
Diane Floyd Bain tells wonderful stories that warm the heart, spark the imagination, and unite people and families across generations. For children, Diane's Harry the Camel connects with all of us who've ever wondered how different our lives might have been if only we'd been born something better, like a wonderful horse instead of an ordinary camel. In the end, we all learn along with Harry that there's nothing better than just being yourself. Diane's little girl in the moon looks down on earthbound children and wonders if they know she's just like them. A story of love, home, and the bond between mother and daughter, its powerful theme that we're each of us different yet all of us the same, plants a seed in children that promises to blossom within a loving and trusting grown-up. Diane's new biography, Rise, recounts the experiences of her grandmother, Ruby, to reveal the hidden strength of the human spirit. Ruby's story inspires all of us to become the best versions of ourselves. You'll find all of Diane's delightful books and much more at dianefloydbame.com. Visit d-i-a-n-n-f-l-o-y-d-b-o-e-h-m.com. That's dianefloydbame.com. Welcome back, everybody, to Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline, where we continue to celebrate the wonderfully rich relationship between the United Kingdom and the United States. And I know we've got another great guest, and we're short on time. Ian and Helena, what do we need to know about Sam Shaker? Okay, I'll, I'll do a very brief introduction. One, one night, uh, I'm in uh, Sam's restaurant, and he's leaning against the bar, and we're having some food. And uh, after about an hour, he's eyeing us up and down. He's trying to work out uh, uh, you know, who we are and, and what was happening. Uh, and we notice a whole series of images of paintings because Sam Shaker is a painter as well. But then we notice that they're of a particular person. So Sam, you take it forward. Who is that person? And how did you first meet this very famous person, but who was then just someone who wanted to come and work in Jazz After Dark? Wonderful. Hello. Hi. Uh, hi. Um, can I tell you about uh, Amy? Yes. Yes, please. Yes. Please. Uh, one, one night, um, one little girl came on the door and um, she asked me, can I come? I said, yeah, yeah we have live music and uh, the admission is five pounds. She said, I don't have money. So I said, uh, I'll tell you what, okay. She said, I want to work in the bar. She came to work in the bar. I noticed that she has no idea, but uh, she started to sample my uh, wine. <laughs> and after half an hour, she said, that I would like to sing with the band. And uh, I said, yeah, let's try. Are you a singer? She said, yes. And um, I introduced her to my band and she went on the stage and she started singing, I will survive to Gloria Gaynor. And my goodness, it was amazing. So I said to her, Amy, leave the bar and just I can introduce you to the band. We have a band every night and um, you can sing with them and rehearse and do whatever you like. And um, she agreed with me and we became very, very good friends. And um, we never stopped since then. And um, one day, uh, Bill Doherty came, he's my friend, with Kat Moss. And um, Kat Moss commissioned me to paint her. Uh, when Amy saw the uh, painting of Kat Moss, she, she said to me, why? You don't paint me. Am I ugly? I said, no, no, no. Hmm. You want me to paint you? I'll, uh, I'll paint you. And we never stop since then. And Sam, we are talking about Amy Winehouse. Yeah, Amy that's Winehouse. Amy Winehouse. 
I mean, sorry, yes, the, 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 the reality with, uh, with Amy Winehouse was that uh, you saw her through many different periods in her life. Um, and you've written a book about her as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but at the same time, you almost became her second father, a surrogate father. Tell me, how did that relationship build? Well, I introduced her to my daughter and to my son, and my son was working for her like a bodyguard as well. And um, my daughter, she she like Amy, and my daughter is a police officer, so they become really three good friends and um, so Amy she used to introduce me to all her friends this is Sam uh, he's a very good artist he's my second dad and um, uh, she introduced me to them to Mark Ronson, Adal, uh, Kevin Spacey all these good people and uh, I bent them Oh, so fabulous! You painted, painted all these wonderful pictures. So just yeah. so obviously, Amy, you got to know her quite well. Very, very well. She was amazing. She was my best friend. Oh, I, I used to see her every now and then walking down the road in North London near my mum's. Um, she uh, always had the bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Janice is my friend. I have my photo with Janice, and she's an amazing lady. Really, I love her so much. We have a question from Philip Chan. What was the big hit song she wrote in your bar one night, Sam? Sorry, what is the question? Uh, what was the big hit song that Amy wrote when she was in your bar one night? Oh, it's Back to Black. Back oh. to Black. Uh, she um, she phoned me one night about uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, and she said, don't close, I'm coming. And... Uh, she came and she was very, very upset. She started to cry. And uh, I, as usual, I give her some drinks. And uh, she started to sit in her VIP room. And um, suddenly, about 6 o'clock in the morning, um, she finished the, the song, Back to Black. It was amazing, one of her best albums. Right. And um, she commissioned me to do a, a cocktail by her name. And we have now a cocktail called Back to Black. The black vodka, we get it from France and white vodka and all these things. So that's her favorite drink. Sam, can I ask a question? What made Amy feel so safe? And that's, that was one of the big things. You gave Amy safety, didn't you? You oh. gave her a place where she could feel safe, she could feel secure, she could be herself as well. That's, How that's did you right. actually create that? Um, she loves the... Um, uh it's um once she go inside she hide in her vip room and um, when the band won't sing ask her to sing she go and sing with them uh paparazzi is not allowed to come in uh, my club completely and we have security on the door and um, um that's she feel really uh, secure and, uh, and she feel like at home. Um, this is very, very important. That's Sam, Sam there are so many beautiful memories and uh, so many beautiful pictures. Uh, can visitors to your restaurant see these pictures? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all over the place. Um, um, and um, uh, uh, I've, I've got here about uh, 30, 40 paintings. Uh, mm -hmm. Large, the small, and uh, and her VIP room as well. I've got her favorite uh, uh, picture, like this one, yeah. and uh, uh, she loved it. She loved it, and she said to me, uh, "Always, Sam, um, never stop painting me, uh, mm. and and um, make me beautiful." And that's what I do. And, uh, any foreigner, any tourist, anybody coming to see. Uh, uh, my bar, they like to take photo in Amy VIP room. Um, uh, they love it, and th that's that's what I do. Uh, just uh, on behalf of Amy, uh, to show them uh, uh, what all about Amy one house, and uh, tell them you can read the book I wrote about Amy called uh, Losing Amy. 
and um, they love it. Beautiful. I was going to ask you about your book. How, how can people find a copy of it? Uh, they they can buy it from Amazon. They can download it to their um, laptop or Kindle, and I think they pay Amazon uh, uh, two pound only or something like that. And uh, they, it's an ebook, and um, they can learn how to uh, everything about Amy. Uh, also, I wrote a book called The Art I Love to teach art students how to paint portray step by step. Um, they all from Amazon as well. And uh, how can people get in touch with you and when will the restaurant be open? Uh, we, we open every day. And uh, soon um, uh, on the 17th, next week, next Monday, uh, our uh, we have about 35 bands every night different band and uh, we look forward to open all, all day and um, until three o'clock in the morning uh, music and dancing and uh, ha happy time and uh, most of the time some girls they come they like to copy Amy one house and sing her song it's it's really nice uh, atmosphere where uh, everybody feel happy and safe and no problem at all. It's Beautiful. Amy's bar. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with Amy and your beautiful artwork. It's been a pleasure. I look forward to coming to your restaurant when we head over there. So it's my, it's my pleasure. And one night I must spend to your portrait. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yes. yes, that'd be lovely. Yes, I would love that. So thank, thank you, you so much. We're actually at the top of the hour for our show. It's been so wonderful having everyone here. I'll just bring Simon out. He's still backstage. I just want to say thank you to everyone, especially to Alcini, Ian and Helena, Simon, Sam, and Stephen and Daphne. They had to, to leave, but thank you again. It's been a pleasure. Terrific program. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Lovely seeing everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. See you Bye next now. week. Bye. Al, that was really terrific. And I it learned was, so much it today. Was, it was it was a great program. And what I liked about it is that our last conversation with Sam ties us back to one of Helena's first notes, which is it's Mental Health Awareness Week. And when you think about a story like Amy Winehouse, there are an awful lot of people in our lives that are struggling in silence, symptoms we can't see. And we need to be mindful of that and respectful of that, and we need to help people. That's for sure, because living in silence is, uh, there's really no benefit to doing it. You just make yourself more ill mentally and physically, and we need to continue to provide a platform for people to share their stories. And so that's a big reason of why we're here on Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline. And I'm so thrilled to have you as my partner, co-host, and friend. Sure. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. All right. I will see you later for the business show. I'll look forward to that. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Wow, that was amazing. So much great information. In case you missed the show from the beginning, please head on over to our YouTube channel, Dr. Jacqueline LLC, and subscribe there to see all of our shows. Our show, Celebrate Great Britain Royally Rich Show, will be every Wednesday at 1030 Eastern Time, 3.30 British summertime. So we hope that you'll join us. Right after this, minutes from now, we have the Underdog Show starring Ben Chai and our guest, Adam Cortez. And then we have the Business Show with Al Sini and featuring our guest, Donna Barnes. We then have A Better You, lessons from the best coaches, consultants, and trusted advisors. That is at 4 p.m. Eastern time, 9 p.m. British summertime. We have two experts, Hyatt Ives and Megan Sandwick. And then we have In the Name of Love, which is a brilliant show all about love, all things of love for compassion, love for each other, love for the world. So we hope that you'll join us. And I will say goodbye for now as I go do a quick change and I will be back momentarily as I mentioned with Ben Chai. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Bye everyone. <laughs>